Hey everybody, Mr. Boo here. And today I wanna to talk to you about the foundations of a Lego city. Um, so over the years, I've built and rebuilt my city many, many times. And as you know, I'm in the process of rebuilding my city once again. And what I'm doing is actually taking all the lessons that I've learned, all the mistakes that I've made, um, all the good things as well, and just kind of combining it all into this newest version of my layout. Will this be my last? Most definitely not. Uh, for me, part of the joy is building and rebuilding a layout, and it really um, is just fun to me. And it's just fun to completely tear it out and start from scratch. And so that's kind of what I've been doing here. So let's talk about those foundations for your city, because I know a lot of you are like, as I, I get asked all the time, you know, Mr. Buki, how do I build a city? I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. Well, if you remember way back in the day, and you can watch some of my really old videos, um, I started out very basic. I went to Ikea, I bought a, a couple tabletops, some, legs, some adjustable legs, and I started with that. Those Ikea tabletops are fantastic. They used to come in exactly the right width for base plates. They were 30 inches deep, which is three base plates deep. And they were about, I think they were about like five and a half wide or something like that. Uh, it was perfect for starting out. They were fantastic for those early city layouts. But what I quickly discovered is as I added more weight, as I added more of the levels and started adding more and more to those tables, they just weren't up to the task of supporting the weight. So they started to sag in the middle. And that was a real serious issue because they're, they're basically just fiberboard in the middle, cardboard. And um, long term, I was really worried about them supporting all that weight. Now, temporarily, you can jury rig it. You can put a, a leg in the middle to kind of support it up. That's not a good long-term solution, and I don't recommend that long-term. What you really wanna do is think more, like what, what is your scope? If you're starting out small, that's perfectly fine, and that's that'll serve you well for quite a while. But if you're gonna get into the levels and the layers and start adding lots and lots of stuff, um, you wanna think of something a little more sturdy. You know, you can go with that plywood is great, three-quarter plywood. If you can reinforce it on the bottom, that's even better. Um, uh, solid core doors. Or fantastic. I use those in my previous version of the layout ex extensively. Um, very, very heavy, very solid, uh, zero sagging, difficult to maneuver, but uh, very good and very inexpensive. And they come in pre-cut width, so if you don't want to be cutting with the saw ripping up plywood, um, they come in 30 inches wide, 32, 36. I think they go up to 40 inches wide. And the, the length, I think they're like, what's this, you know, a stand, whatever a standard door height is, six feet or whatever. So they're pretty, uh, available and they're pretty easy to work with, um, just really heavy. Those work great. I still have a couple of those in the back of the new layout here. I was able to salvage, salvage them because they're so they're so good. Um, or you can kind of get up to what I consider like kind of like maybe where the ultimate thing is to kind of have something custom built. And so that's what these are here, as you see on the sides of me. These are custom built cabinets. My handyman built these for me. Um, they're made out of three quarter ply, super durable, but they're built exactly to the spec that I wanted exact depth with um, their modular, their modularity, you know, I'm really big on modularity and I actually broke from that trend in my last layout, which I was kind of kicking myself for as I was tearing it apart because I had these gigantic sections that I'd built, not modular. And I just said, oh man, that's not good because now it's, it's so difficult to move it and it's difficult to reintegrate it into the new layout because the measurements are all different. Um, so the modularity is key. So even these bins you see behind me here, these are modular. These are custom fit for the Sterilite drawers. You can hold uh, all sorts of um, parts in them. That's my design is I wanted, this, I wanted the, the parts storage. I have storage behind them so I can store things, hide things behind the Sterilite drawers, um, but also the tabletops, Every, everything. It's just all a nice, clean, custom look. So that's one way you can certainly go. Now, let's take a closer look at the early foundations of the city. And you're gonna see how this all kind of comes together. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of tips and tricks along the way that I've already discovered with this new layout, okay? All right, so this view gives you a really nice overview of the main components of my new layout. Um, right here, you can see these are the new cabinets. You can see behind that, these are the old solid core door tabletops that I'm using. Um, you can see the platform. That's This is the first level platform that's going in. You can see the support elements for the platform here. And actually you see extra ones sitting over here. And then you can see the Lego starting to go in on top of it all. Now, um, a few things to note. So, and let's actually, let's start with this lower bit. So you're gonna notice that right away, or I noticed right away, 
So I had these built to a certain height that I liked because I was fitting these um, bins below. And so everything fits nice and neat. It's really clean. It's really excellent. What I neglected was to figure out the height of the old tabletops. Now this is higher than the old layout by a few inches. Um, but the interesting thing was it's very hard to find table legs this tall because this is almost bar stool height where we're at. This is pretty high up. Um, and so usually traditional table legs, like those adjustable ones like Ikea sells, they don't go this high. So I had to find adjustable legs that would fit that could get this high. Pretty tricky to do. I could have built custom legs, but I was in a hurry and I was impatient. And I wanted to get going with the city. But um, so anyway, so I did get these, I did find legs and they were pretty darn close, but you're gonna see, do you see right here? Right in this junction right here. Let me, let me get the zoom so you can see it really good. You're gonna notice there's a little bit of an edge and a gap right there. I said, and so as soon as I did that, I said, uh-oh, what am I gonna do? I need to figure, I need to either raise these guys up or lower that somehow, but I couldn't because of the legs. So I said, oh boy, what am I gonna do with this? How am I gonna fix that? Well, the solution for me was pretty easy and you're gonna see it, it's right up here. So actually what I did is I grabbed some foam board. This is um, one quarter inch foam board. It's very inexpensive. It's very easy to cut, work with. And this actually, you can see, you can barely see it if you notice it, which is I'm glad I went with the white um, color for the cabinets, but you can see this. So this track here is actually sitting on a quarter inch of foam board. Actually, model railroading they do this a lot. They use cork road bed. It actually um, quiets things down quite a bit, which I'm curious to see once they get the trains running if this is actually going to make things quieter. Um, but it also is just enough of a boost to level this off with just that with that little gap there. So lesson learned. You guys can learn from my mistakes. Um, that was the first thing that I noticed. Now, the other thing we're gonna talk about over here is the platforms. So when you start building platforms, these platforms are only um, four feet wide. Any longer than that, they start to get unwieldy. They start to get just too much. You start to get sagging. Even at four feet with three quarter inch wood, um, you still will start to get some sagging over time, especially with these heavy, heavier modulars sitting on top here. So that's something to be aware of. Um, an easy and quick remedy for that is to just put a leg in the middle. You could put two if you really wanted to. I just put one. I've never had any issues um, with just the one leg. So on all of these platforms that are going in, they all have one leg in the middle and then two on each side. So you have five legs per platform. That uh, prevents a sag in the middle, keeps everything nice and supported. Um, these are also adjustable legs, which is really important because as I found out, the floor in my house is not straight. So. I've leveled the cabinets as best as I can, but even then, sometimes they're just a little bit off. And so these, you can get these on Amazon. They're very inexpensive, they're metal. Um, they just screw right in on the, on the, to the bottom of your um, wood. And then this part right here is adjustable. This is the adjustable foot part. So you can see you can fine tune it to get it very specific to fit exactly what you need to level off the top there. Really critical to be able to do that. I mean, you can use shims and, and I used to use, um, Two by twos cut down, and then I would put shims underneath it. I'd put Lego bricks underneath it. It was just, you know, kind of chintzy. It was kind of cheesy. And so this way, it actually makes it really easy to level with these. So that's a good tip. These are very inexpensive and work really well. Um, and then, of course, the Lego is the last element. And you can see again, so the walls that I've done, they've always been modular. Um, you can see the one that I pulled out on top here. So they're 32 studs wide. Um, they actually sit on, and I can show you with this one here. So they actually they actually have bricks on the bottom. Um, they're actually going to sit on a um, base plate that I cut down. And yes, I do cut my base plates. So they will sit on a cut down base plate. Uh, and the reason why I'll show you, and this is actually something else that I learned as we go over this way, so once you get to corners and other things like that, like right here. In the past, I'd always put my walls on the last stud of the train track. So it used to be that there wasn't two studs where you see that train track right there. There was just one stud because the retaining wall actually sat on the track base plate. The problem is the geometry then would get all messed up when you got to the corners like this because it would um, be off by one. So you'd have weird 
gaps or you wouldn't be able to do this kind of uh, this kind of brickwork on the, the snot stuff on the outside or it'd have to be short and it would look off or it just look weird. So this time again, I corrected that. The retaining walls don't actually sit on the base plates anymore. They sit on their own cut down base plate and it, um, it makes it all line up more geometrically. So it's a much more solid type of design. Um, and then last but not least, so this is actually a brick built platform that you see right here. And this, um, this is using those um, 16 by 16 mosaic uh, pieces, which are fantastic. I'm running to see if I have one I can show you, I do. So these come in the art kits for the mosaics. Um, they are super thick, super sturdy, and super durable to work with. Um, and you can see you can modify them out. This one I actually, I actually didn't have enough of these and this was an old platform. So I actually built out my own version of the platform for to, to fit with these. Um, but these pieces are gold if you wanna build some structure, really uh, sturdy structure. These work fantastic. They're Technic, so they lock together. Um, you can do all sorts of things. And then the supports underneath this, these are just, just stacks of bricks underneath there. There's just columns, literally of brick. So what I like to use is I'll, I'll stack actually um, two by fours and just stack them in the columns like this. So they end up being four by four columns. It makes it super sturdy. And there's just a bunch of those underneath at various spots. And when you actually get down to it, you can see that it's actually pretty sturdy all the way across. Like I feel confident putting a modular on here. Uh, it's gonna be supported very well. All right, so there you have it. The foundations of my Lego city. Uh, let me know if you have any comments or suggestions down below. You guys are great with that. Um, I will get back to you as quickly as I can. Um, if you have any thoughts or ideas or well, how do you do it? How have you learned to build your city? What techniques do you use? Am I missing something? Let me know because I always want to learn. And yeah, I live a great resource online from, from the community. It's always helpful in helping me out solve a lot of these weird issues. But um, again, these were just a few of the pitfalls that I'd encountered over the years. Pitfalls that I've encountered with a new layout already. And just my quick and simple little solutions to take care of that. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I will be back real soon as we continue on this journey to rebuilding my Lego city. Take care. Bye.